Welcome back, y'all. Welcome back, y'all, to I'm Just Saying. This is your host, MC Enemy. And for those who have not seen the first episode, Enemy is spelled I-N-A-M-E. Stands for It's Not About Me. All right. We got a, a good topic here today. And I hope y'all be blessed by it. There is power in the name Jesus. <laughs> now, for some of those camps out there, whatever they're going to tell me, oh, that's not his name. You know what? You're correct. That, that was not his name when he walked on this earth. But the Bible says that you must worship God in spirit and in truth. In spirit, I know that there's power in the name because he has never failed me yet. But on this channel, I'm trying to stay in my lane. I'm trying to deal with the truth here. All right, so there's three words that we're going to have to learn. Some of us already know them, but we're going to go over three words. First one is called etymology. Etymology is the study of the origin of words and the way in which their meanings have changed throughout history. Very important. Next word is translation. It's to change a word from one language to another while attempting to keep the original word's meaning. Last one would be transliteration. It's the process of transferring a word from the alphabet of one language to another with no regard to the original meaning of the word. All right, so remember those three. Screenshot them, whatever, go back to them, look them up. But those are the three words that we, we're going to be concentrating on as we go through this, this word study. Do you have an intimate relationship with God? Okay, if you do, what is his name? Now, the purpose of that question is not to uh, get into a useless conversation about his name is this, his name is that. God has many names that he's been called throughout the Bible. But this is an etymology lesson, and that's why I'm asking you, what is his name? Let's look. This is from the Sefer Bible, Exodus chapter 3, verse 14. And remember, the Sefer Bible brings the words back to their original uh, text in the scriptures, or at least tries to. So let's read this from the Sefer Bible. It says, And Elohim said unto El Moshe, Ahiah, Asher, Ahiah. And he said, Thus shall you say unto the children of Yasharel, Ahiah has sent me unto you. So now I'm going to read that in plain English. It says, And God said to Mo unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, This is what you will tell the children of Israel. I am has sent me to you. So some words you haven't, maybe you haven't heard of, Elohim. Well, El means God, and Elohim is the, for, uh, the plural form of God. So it's basically saying gods with an S. Kind of alludes to the fact that God is in three persons, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Then we have Ahia Asher Ahia. I am that I am. Basically, wherever he is, is the present. He is the self-existing one.
So here is the, the way the, the name has progressed throughout the, from the scriptures. Originally, it was a pictograph. So it had pictures and it had no vowels and was read from right to left. So that's why I put it there. It looks like it's backwards, but it was, it's, then I flipped it around on the second go. So the way we read it is from left to right and it's Y-H-W-H or yod Hey vav Hey. That's the Hebrew alphabet. So now what they did was they borrowed the a, a vowel from the uh, word Adonai, which means my lords. And before I go to the next word, there's also no W's back in those days. So a W was written as two V's, but it had the sound of two U's. Like when we say the word vacuum. So we came out with Ya, U, A. And later on, when, the, when we actually get, did get a vowel, or excuse me, a consonant, the letter W, a true W, uh, they added, they borrowed the letter E now from Elohim, and they came out with the, the word Yahweh. So all those different variations, they all contain Yah. So that's the shortened version of God's name and just simply means I am. So here's another ver verse. This is in Isaiah 42. Verse 8. Again, this is reading from the Sefer Bible. It says, I am Yahuwah, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. So he's telling you he's not going to give his glory to anybody else. He's not going to accept you praising pagan idols. He's talking to the children of Israel, the descendants of Israel. So what group of people instinctively place the, sound, the, the Yah sound in the names of their children? Hmm. I, I, I'm just saying. You answer it for yourself. So I got two different uh, Bible verses and I'm using the New Living Translation here. So Isaiah 7, 14. All right, then, the Lord himself will give you the sign. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Then years later in, in Matthew chapter 1, verse 23. Look. Look. The virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. So now we're shifting gears to Christ's name or Jesus's name. They, they, it was foretold that he was going to, his name was going to be, you're going to call him Emmanuel. So Emmanuel, if you look at that just the way it's written, it kind of says it all right there. Basically, you can get out of that, I'm man and God. Because remember, El is, a, is the singular form of God. But it says it means God is with us. Now, it says you will call him Emmanuel. It didn't say you will name him Emmanuel. And I, I used to think about that and say, why did they just name him Emmanuel? It says you'll call him Emmanuel, 
but it just says you will call him, not name him, Emmanuel. So you will call him God with us. So Yash, Yahusha or Yahushua, they named him. The, 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 that, the form of that is still debated which one is correct. I'm going to go with the Yahusha. And it means I am he who saves. See that, that Yah sound means I am. And the rest of it means he who saves. But that's the Old Testament. You know, uh, the Hebrew, but the New Testament is written in Greek. And the Greeks do not have a corresponding letter for the letter Y. So to get the sound of the Y, they had to group together an I and an E to give the ia sound, e ah sound. And then if you translate the with us part of the Emmanuel, meaning God with us, the Greeks use sous, like sous chef. Or so it's the S is the second S is silent, so Su Chef or Su meaning under or below. You're under somebody's tutelage or you're beneath someone who else who, who is guiding you. So now we have the Ia and Sus. Ia Sus meaning I am below or God below. Kind of pretty close to the same thing as God with us, right? Later when English comes along, they replace the I in Iasus with a J, and it gives us Jesus. But then also the Greeks would use SOS, which we all understand SOS to mean like a, an international signal for help. So the, the SUS or SOS became in English SUS, giving us Jesus. And a literal translation of that, just as it's written, would mean I am help or something that's easier to understand, God saves. Here's a verse from Hosea, fourth chapter, sixth verse. This is from the King James Version. It says, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing that thou, thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. I will also forget thy children. So my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. God is talking about his chosen people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. If you don't know who his chosen people are, you can go back and look at, at my first episode, the pilot episode, and but it will tell you and explain to you that most people are going to say it's, it's the Jews, but he chose his people before Jews were, the word Jew or the term Jew was created. His chosen people were Israelites, the descendants of Israel. Israel is Jacob. The forefathers are Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. All right, so this has been a pretty brief explanation. I hope you guys got something out of that. I told you before in my first episode that we were, all the, the um, teachings were not going to be very long. So this one 
is approximately 20 minutes, more easy to digest. You can go back and watch it a couple of times and, and, and get what you need out of it. So if you don't know, now you know. Worship the Father, praise the Son, accept the Holy Spirit. I'm out. Be blessed. Peace.